G'day, it's Rob here again. Um, as you know, I've done a few videos on uh, restoring bandsaws, 4x6 bandsaws, and uh, showed a few modifications. And uh, I did mention in uh, one of my videos that um, getting these things to cut a straight on the vertical axis uh, can be, there's a bit of a trick to it. And uh, well, I know a lot of people uh, have had problems and probably given up trying to actually get these things to cut perfectly on that vertical plane. They'll cut uh, okay on the horizontal plane, but it's the vertical that's the problem. And uh, they think, oh, you know, maybe the, the arm is out of alignment and that the pivot point is, is the problem. But the pivot point almost certainly is not the problem. And uh, in this video, I'll show you how to check uh, the bandsaw and how to uh, overcome this problem. The first thing to do is to check that the swing arm is actually aligned correctly to the, to the bed of the, of the saw. And to do that, you need a, just a plain builder's square. And what you want to do is you put your builder's square on the bed, make sure it's all clean, of course. You bring it over to, so it just touches the blade. And then you lift your arm up. And if the, if the pivot point is at the right um, orientation and everything's square, you find that as you lift that blade up, as you lift the arm up, the blade will remain the same distance from the top of the square to the bottom. Now that will show you that the swing arm is lifting at dead 90 degrees to the, to the bed. So that's the first important thing to do. I can pretty much guarantee that if it's a half decent bandsaw, uh, you won't have any run out there or it'll be negligible um, on that vertical plane. You'll find that um, the, uh, the clearance will remain the same right through. Okay, so we've checked and the swing arm's okay, that's not the problem. The problem is somewhere else. Now what happens invariably is you put in your piece of steel, you saw through it, and the blade, you can actually, you actually see, if you look down vertically like this, you'll see, if it's out of alignment, you'll see that blade bending out of alignment. It'll actually have a bow in it. And what happens invariably is that when you look at your piece of steel after you've done the cut, you'll find that it will cut, it will, the blade will be pulling inwards, either on uh, one end of the job or both ends of the job, and it could be to varying degrees. Now, um, this is why when you do your test, use something like this, a bit of U-shaped channel, and you can get a good idea then, put the square on to measure the, uh, measure the run out, put your square on like that, and you can check to see um, on each end how they're performing, how the blade is cutting. Now what's happening is that, as I said, it will be running inwards. And when you, um, I mean you can see this, once you actually complete the cut, if you then run the, the blade up and down alongside the job, you'll see that uh, the blade will be in by the top of the job there, but as it goes down, the job will, the cut will pull away from the blade. and. So that's what's happening. It's, it's cutting in on an angle like this, and that's what, you've got to, that's what you've got to get rid of. Okay, so you figured out that from the cut that you did, the test cut, you figured out that it's either cutting in on, on one end of the blade or both ends of the blade. It's cutting in like that. So what are you got to do? Well, you've got to basically twist your it means the blade is not vertical. It means the blade is canted like this. And of course, once it's canted, it's then you're going to cut on an angle because it's going to follow that cant of the blade, naturally. It's not going to straighten itself out in some miraculous way. So what happens is you've got to use your adjusters here to pivot this around to twist the blade vertical. Um, and I mean, you can test, you can check these blades with a square, um, like this, which is what they say in the book, but 
it's hard to see because you're only measuring a very short distance against this and, uh, it might, and then you've got the teeth, um, the set on the teeth which also causes problems. So the best way to do it is to actually look down vertically. If there's a lot of run out, you'll see it. But basically, that's the problem. You've got to twist this adjuster around, um, in this case we're going clockwise, to make that blade cant out at the bottom, whereas it's canting in at the bottom. Okay, the people say, oh, but I've done that, and there's no adjustment. That's where the problem comes in, and I'll show you why that's happening. Now, the first problem, the first thing you look at is, what sort of flat washers have they got under the bolts? Now, if they've got small diameter flat washers, um, and you take, them, take this bolt out and look at them, if they've got small diameter, they almost certainly have compressed and be cone-shaped. They'll have a bow in them. That's, that's part of your problem. Throw them away, get some good, big, heavy, uh, thick, thick washers of a bigger diameter that will cover the whole surface area and not sort of pull into that adjusting slot uh, that you've got in this end adjuster. So do that first, then try and adjust and see if that solves your problem. You may find that by doing away with those crummy little washers that they've got, you get rid of that cone-shaped washer effect, and what that cone-shaped washer effect does is, as you tighten up the nut, the cone shape of the compressed washer is not letting you get full um, adjustment uh, in the system. And I'll, uh, I'll show you how these things actually um, work. But first off, try that and see if that solves your problem. So thick, bigger diameter, thicker flat washer. Try and see if you can get more clockwise motion uh, doing it that way. And if that doesn't work, we'll go to the next step. Okay, so that doesn't work. The next step is to take out this bolt. We'll do it. And herein you have to uh, do a little either grinding or filing. Now I'll get that out and I'll carry on. We're now at the critical part of the operation. Now looking at the adjuster, uh, uh, you've got the adjusting uh, slide here and on that you've got a tapered upward dovetail. Onto that goes the the roller, the roller guide. And if you look at the bottom of the roller guide, that's got a parallel dovetail. Now, or recess, whatever you're going to call it. That width there, the width of that is the exact width of the very bottom of the, of the dovetail on this section. And the way this works is all your adjustment is in the top section. The bottom part uh, is held in, in the position. There's no sideways movement on the bottom part, and all of the movement is basically in that on that plane. Now what happens is you you want to twist the blade out more, so you want to go across this direction, but you, you can't go any uh, far enough because you're running out of travel. Well, you think you're running out of travel, but what's happening is the bolt, which is in here, is actually coming up against the side of the slot opposite the direction you want to rotate it in. So if you look at this, you can see that the washer is actually burred. You can see how it's crushed in the edge of the slot. It hasn't crushed it in enough that I can't get the correct adjustment, but basically to fix the problem, to get this to rotate all the way across so that the edge of the, of the, uh, the dovetail comes against the edge of the base, you have to grind away file back a little bit on this side of the arm and that way when it hits the bolt well it gives you enough clearance that it doesn't actually hit the bolt um, and uh, you can actually get this thing to come right across so this is the problem the bolt is the problem uh, because it's hitting it's hitting on this section here so just file that away with a, uh, a flat file or uh, whatever you've got or use your die grinder um, you may find that the way they've cast this also isn't perfectly uh, parallel. Um, 
looking in here, you might find it's actually uh, the machining might be on an angle like this rather than, than parallel. So square that up, grind it back, that will almost certainly uh, solve your problem. It will give you that extra amount of twist that you require and the problem solved. So there you go folks, do that. Um, uh, if it works, yeah it will. Post a comment and tell me and uh, others will know that uh, that is the solution. Okay, see you later. Cheers.